Hey everybody, this is Jim Sampson. Hey, I'm Shane Bordeaux from Twisted X Brewing Company, home of Tex-Mex Beer. You're watching us on The Beer Diaries. Rolling fast down I 35 Hey folks, Greg Zeschuk here from the Beer Diaries. I'm here at Twisted X Brewing Company, just outside Austin, Texas, in a place called Cedar Park, Texas, part of the Hill Country. In the Texas heat behind you is the blazing sun and hot air, but we've got beer to keep us safe. Uh, here with Jim Sampson, one of the co-founders and brewer here. So thanks for having us. Pleasure to come to your place. You'll, people can probably see it's not, not a gigantic place yet. No, you're seeing the whole place. This is all 900 square foot of it in the Texas heat like you're talking yeah, about. So thanks for coming to sweat with us. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bonding experience, yeah. right? So, I mean, yeah, that was one of the cool things coming here. It's, it's, it's just you and your partner, Shane. Like, you guys are, you guys are it. You've been making it happen. Uh, you guys have been going since about, like, brewing professionally. Not professionally is the wrong word, but just brewing, like, commercially for just over a year, a year and a couple Correct. months. May 5th was our one-year anniversary party this year. So we've been out on the market just over a year. Yeah, and I've noticed actually your stuff again is coming around Austin. Uh, your guys' capacity is not super huge though, so it's actually a little bit tricky to get your stuff from time to time. Yeah, what? yeah, we do three barrels at a time, and so we're trying to support eight to ten bars consistently, <laughs> three barrels at a time, and so it's a, it's a struggle sometimes, but the whole idea of this place was to get out on the market, get some beers out there, test the market, see what the people, whether they liked it or not, liked what we were doing, and it's been gung-ho. Everybody's, it's been a good response. So now we're ready to make the jump. So one of the things I want to talk about was like you guys have been really interesting in the recipes you started with. You, you were aggressive. You made some neat beers. Like you know, of course you have the Twisted X Lager, the premium lager you guys do. But then you had Fuego, which is a, a pilsner with a lot of jalapeno in it. Well, it was, it was a real interesting, interesting beer. I found you know a taste explosion for me. Yeah. Well, Shane and I, you know, we want to do Tex-Mex beers, right? So we took. Mexican style lagers is the base of that and then wanted to put Texas ideas into it. You know, and peppers are a big part of, of Tex-Mex and, and the things that we eat around here. But we tasted a bunch of pepper beers around the country and most of them, you drink half a pint max and you're done, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two or three it's drinks tough. and you can't have it anymore. We didn't want you to try our beer and go, that was nice and never ever buy it again, right? The idea is to have a beer, you're gonna drink a pint or two of it and be fine with that, right? So. Like you said, we wanted it to be a Pilsner that had some flavor and some heat with it. It's not just a jalapeno delivery mechanism. Yeah, it's yeah. a beer with some something else to it. And obviously, yeah. I mean, you guys have a, a, a modest sized brewery now. I mean, we are, I think I can almost kick my foot out and hit the wall you here. You can. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fly across the room in the meantime. But you guys are going to be expanding as well. One of the exciting things, you guys have some big projects in the works. Yeah, absolutely. We're brewing on a three barrel system right now. And that's what's here in our 900 square foot huge warehouse. And uh, we've got a contract on some land in Dripping Springs, Texas. And we've got a 30 barrel brew house on order. So hopefully by the end of the year, the new brew house will be built. We'll have some equipment installed and come January, we'll go 10 times what we're doing here and actually start making enough beer to, to package and get out onto the market in bottles and kegs as well. I think one thing I've noticed is and you and your partner, Shane, I mean, and mm -hmm. you guys, it's, it's really interesting because I mean, as you talk about, you're, you're the brewmaster, but I saw Shane brewing a few minutes ago and he's filtering beer and it's like, you guys are wearing the hats and switching around and actually responding to the fact that, hey, you right. guys started this cool business, you're making it work, you're doing what it takes to make it happen. Yeah, well, Shane and I have known each other since the summer of 2000. We've been friends for a long time. We've done adventure racing and canoe racing and all kinds of stuff together outside of this business world. And when we started this, we both wanted to be able to do everything. You know, if we need to brew on a Saturday and I got the flu, Shane can come in yeah. here and make a batch of beer. There's only two of us, we got to do it all. So that was the goal. Let's make sure we can both take care of the business completely. And then as we expand and start hiring employees, I'll take care of the production side and Shane will take care of the sales and distribution marketing side of the house. And we'll kind of separate, but we, I don't see us ever completely letting go of the communication on how we run that all together as a team because 
we've had too many great ideas that come together when we're working together. We can't be we can't be separate yeah. from that. Well, you guys seem like a great partnership. I mean, yeah. real good. oh, he's great. I'll I'll keep him. <laughs> so one one of the other cool things. I mean, you guys like a lot of. He the paid folks, me to say that. He said, "Whatever <laughs> side you you guys cut are your own business." Um, Another thing that's interesting, you guys are both have a tech background. I mean, again, a lot of folks around here actually coming into beer from Austin yeah. have had some brewing experience, but also have some tech experience. Right. Shane and, Shane and I met at a tech company here in Austin that got bought a couple of years ago, and he went off to work for another company, and I actually still work there. So we both still have day jobs while we've got this whole brewery up and running. So October, November-ish of this year, um, we'll probably quit that side of the world and go off into this full time. And How did you guys get into brewing? Like, what was it that suddenly one day you woke up and said, "Hey, I like beer and I'm gonna brew"? What was? Well, the, what I've been was making the... beer for a long time. So just been a home, home brewer. Home brewer yeah. a traditional home I've brewer. been making beer at the house for 15 years, probably. You know, started just making extract batches on the stove in the kitchen. Yeah. And enjoyed it so much, and got involved with some other guys that were doing all grain kind of stuff, and started hanging out with them, and it just kind of evolved into a hobby that has never stopped. Right, right, right. And I've had my own business in the past before I was working for this company. And so I've always liked to be in charge of what I'm doing and, and wanted to get back to that. But both of those jobs were, or both of those businesses were in the tech side of the world. And I don't want to go back into technology. I want to turn off my email <laughs> and answer you every three or four days, yeah, yeah. not every 37 seconds. No, that's cool. Yeah. So in terms of in terms of the actual local brewing scene, what's what's the camaraderie like among the other brewers? That's awesome. It's what, what have you experienced? We, Nothing but helpfulness and openness and friendliness. I mean, you know, there's there's an email list for the Texas Craft Brewers Guild where people will send out questions and everybody chimes in on what they think. You know, there's a monthly meeting where we all get together and just drink beers together for the fun of it. People will answer questions and help you out. I've gone and brewed with some of the other brewers. They're like, come in, we'll show you what we're doing. Uh, once, once, twice a week, I'm probably asking somebody, how do you guys do this? What's the size of your fermenter what do you yeah, know yeah. what yeast are you using for whatever and people are just really open and, and helpful about that kind of I've stuff. I've noticed on the on the tap uh, list here for the for the tastings here you guys have some guest beers as well. Yeah right now we've actually got uh, hops and grains alt we've yeah. had uh, one of the beers from the uh, New Republic brewing guys out of uh, College Station. College Station. Off camera it says College Station magically. Whoop. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, absolutely. We like to to bring their beers over here, and when people yeah. come over, let them have tastes and vice versa. You know, like I said earlier, we're eight or ten bars around town, and some of those guys are small as well. So if we can help promote them and vice versa, it's a good thing. So there you go. So with the, with some, what were some of the specific things you learned from this brew house that you want to apply to the next one, the one you guys are building mm -hmm. now? But yeah, one of the reasons that Shane and I did this pilot brewery is you talked earlier about us being from the tech industry, neither one of us have professional brewing experience. So we wanted to get a brewery up and running, get beers out on the market and see what it took to sustain that. And it's easier to do that at a small level than it is with, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment, you know, and a big stake on the line. So uh, we've learned a lot of, about just the equipment itself and filtering and how to take care of things as they go wrong. But even outside of that, you're talking about the sweat and the heat in here. This building is set the wrong direction on the property and the wind blows right by and never comes inside. So we've been talking a lot with our architect about even the, the building itself allowing breezes to come through and ventilation. And so just the building itself, what we're gonna make it look like when we build the next spot. Awesome. So I've been hiding some beers off camera here and I'm gonna pull some of those out. We'll talk a little bit about them. This is your Fuego. Mm -hmm which is, a, as we talked about earlier, a Pilsner, but with a real awesome jalapeno kick. Like, you know, one of the themes you guys obviously have is Tex-Mex beers, and I think, you know, best exemplified by jalapeno and beer. Uh, we talked a little bit about it earlier, but, you know, this, like I said, this was really interesting, because right off the bat, you think it's a Pilsner, and then all of a sudden, creep, creeping up is this wonderful heat that yeah. kind of, it never gets too intense, but just kind of sits back there, and then slowly dissipates, and then you get a bit of malt, sweet malt in the finish. Right. I'm like, like, what, what was, and you said the goal with this, but the goal with that was to have a, a nice beer that had a little bit of jalapeno flavor and a little bit of heat, but it, it's a beer, right? We want you to taste beer and taste a good beer and then have the jalapeno and the heat be a supporting part of that, not the overpowering part of the beer. It's not a jalapeno liquid, it's a beer that yeah, yeah. has some jalapeno to it. Absolutely. All right, so next beer in the, uh, the Tex-Mex theme, the Chupahapra, uh, the only ale you guys make. 
Uh, kind of a traditional IPA. I mean, I had a real great, great, like, you know, resinous citrus front end on it. But, and the finish, it was still was pretty light. Like, it had a real light body to it. And I like, but, but still great enduring bitterness. What was the, obviously, Trooper Hopra, a mythical creature. What's, right, the, what's, right. the, what's the deal with this beer? Uh, we like IPAs. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a million different IPAs, right? GABF had 180 IPA entries last year. What do you do different so, with this one? Um, Amarillo hopped. We're in Texas, so we figured yeah. Amarillo hops are a town in Texas. So yeah. when we're done with it, we dry hop it with some Amarillo. But you mentioned the sweeter side of it. I tend to like a maltier, sweeter IPA versus like a, Not a, a Northwest dry. piney, yeah. Yeah. you know, drinking a pine tree kind of IPA. Yeah, I found that. So we've purposefully gone down that road just because it's a preference. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so next beer I'm reaching for is the one I'm also currently drinking, which is the Cow Creek Black. It's not, is it Black Lager? or no, dark? it's a Vienna Lager. Vienna Lager, Cow okay. Creek is a Vienna Lager. So our two, our two standard Mexican style lager beers were the Twisted X, yeah. which you're not drinking right now. It's not on tap here today. Right. And the Cow Creek, which is a Vienna style lager. Negra Modelo is yeah. a Vienna lager. So that's our just straightforward Vienna lager. Really tasty. I mean, really lovely kind of caramel, you know, finish. It, you know, the front end, it gets some nice bitterness in it, but like yeah. it just, it's got a real nice balance to it. Like I was really, really like, I'm so, I, I, evidence I've been drinking these. I, I think if I drink 10 little glasses, it doesn't count. That's no, my, exactly. my philosophy. Exactly. That's why we have little glasses. We can drink all we want. <laughs> it's unlimited. The other cool one, I mean, this one is really, really, really cool. This is the Senor Viejo. Um, this is the black lager, but not just a regular black lager, but one that's had some special treatment given to Mr. Viejo. That is correct. So a, a normal black lager yeah. is going to be about 4.5% alcohol. It's a Schwartz beer. This one, we bumped that up and made it an imperial black lager, so it's about 8.5% alcohol. But we did that because of the special treatment it was going to get when yeah. it's done. This is our tequila barrel aged black lager. Tequila barrel aged, we work with uh, Republic Tequila from here in Austin. Yeah. They have the Texas shaped tequila bottle. They buy Jack Daniels barrels, ship them to Mexico, and age their Plata tequila in a Jack Daniels barrel and then we age our beer in that. So you're getting some oak flavors out of it, some vanillas from the oak, some of the, the um, bourbon flavors from it. You also get some of the sweetness from the agave and the tequila, and then the Imperial Schwartz beer on top of that. So it's a, it's a plethora of flavor. <laughs> no, no, and it was, this was, it was a real hard one to, to figure those flavors out yeah. to kind of unwrap it. Yeah. I mean, obviously I, I have a habit of tasting beers. And so I was sitting, sitting around tasting it and I kind of, you know, got a little smoke on the front, still real nice body, not overly heavy. You know, it's not, it's, yep. it's still kind of a, a good body too. A little lower on the carbonation scale, but still some good, good, good uh, carbonation there. And then finally the finish, like you said, a little bit of agave, a little sweetness in the yeah. finish. It's just a real interesting sweetness to it. And then the wood along the middle, that sort of vanilla in there. Like, you know, this one thing, one thing I always do is I sort of declare my favorite beer. I mean, Senor Viejo, it, it, you know, my, my favorite beer. You can't, I mean, this is, you know, I had this on tap actually at, at the Whip In a, a couple of weeks yeah. back and I was yeah. just kind of blown away. I'm just like, a lot of people declare that as their favorite beer. Yeah, and I mean, not, to, to be fair though, like I think the other thing that's really interesting is is the lagers you make have a tremendous amount of character. Like they're actually still very interesting, very yeah. flavorful. Like I know that um, one that's not on yet, it's gonna be, a, I think it's a real summer beer for you guys, the Siesta, which is a prickly pear. Mm -hmm. and I, I mean, that that sounds super exciting. I'd love to sort of find yeah, out. What, our, before we go off of this guy, the Senior Viejo, you're talking about that lighter body to it. Yeah. So we're actually finding a lot of people that say they don't like dark beer, like that beer, because right. it's not like a Guinness or an oatmeal stout yeah, or yeah. something that's thick and chewy. The lager side of it still makes it a lighter, cleaner. It's just like clean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a cool, clean. And then the other thing about that one is all those flavors mixed together, you don't taste or feel the alcohol content of it. <laughs> so people tend to get a little crazy when they're drinking <laughs> Senior Viejo because they don't realize it's higher in alcohol. So they content. remember they have really, really fabulous memories of the times they right. spent with Senior Viejo that and they go, right. I want to go back to visit with him again. <laughs> He's my favorite uncle. <laughs> That's right. So awesome. I mean, thank you so much. Uh, this has been, I mean, the beers are great. It, it's amazing. Like, it's a real cool experience to see you guys here. Like, I, I'm pretty sure we'll be back to see you when you're in your full facility later. So, but, so oh, I hope so. Please come follow us along oh, to the yeah. next place. Well, it's Absolutely. a great experience to have, have come here and seen where you guys came from and go from there. So cool. Excellent. So cheers. 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 Thanks for coming. Ah, pleasure. And to you. Nazarovia, school, all those other things I say. Cool. <laughs> That's authentic. That's what we say. That's what you say? Call. See? Yeah. Does it say that? Oh, I thought these said call on the bottom. Uh oh. Hey, folks. 
It's Greg Zestrick here from the Beer Diaries, and I'm back now with Shane Bordeaux here at Twisted X Brewing. You're one of the co-founders, your director of marketing and sales. But I caught you brewing in here earlier. What's <laughs> up with that? Yeah, we uh, we have to wear a lot of hats around here. Um, it's just Jim and I right now. Uh, really, we set this out to be a pilot brewery to, to really get up on the market, establish a brand, get all the trademarks done, make some good quality beer, uh, you know, understand the recipes that we want to put on the market. And uh, with that, we have to do a little bit of everything. We both deliver beer, we both filter beer, we make beer. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, we have to do a little bit of everything at this stage. So it's good to learn the business, understand, I think, a little bit about the, the hard areas of the, of the business so that we appreciate it a little bit more when we you know, move to the next level. Absolutely. So. And so obviously one of the things that's really obvious and noteworthy about you guys is Tex-Mex beer. I mean, you guys... I think the first Tex-Mex beer company in the world. Like, what was? Yeah. What, what, how'd you guys come up with that? Well, honestly, I think Jim and I. It was over a bottle of tequila. Um, <laughs> hey. I'm, I'm being serious. Uh, <laughs> one night, and I, it really started. We we looked way back, you know, 2009 when we started coming up with the concept to to do beer uh, and to do it commercially. We we wanted to be unique, right? And we're. Uh, I'm a native Texan. I was born in San Antonio, grew up in Houston. I live in Austin for the last, you know. 15 years or so, so I'm growing deep roots down here. Yeah. But I think it really was to help celebrate a unique culture that has been developed in this area. Right. Right. There's a decent Hispanic population. There's Tex-Mex food. There's Mexican-style food. And the majority of folks that have that type of food mentality, the barbecue, the Tex-Mex food, the Mexican food, they, they have Mexican imports to drink. And it drives me nuts, right? There's a $6.9 billion industry of imports. So Jim and I set out and said, look, why don't we come up with a concept? Uh, we started talking with a local, couple of local guys of building a Mexican-style brew pub, which I think is a good idea still. But yeah, yeah. I think with the laws in Texas being a brew pub focused on a restaurant, and it's not a whole lot of expansion capabilities. Yeah, you, yeah. Have, you can't distribute your beer out to the world. Not yet. Maybe if the laws change. Yeah, then that's a good opportunity. So we're, we're definitely pushing Congress. Every session, we are down there, yeah, you know, yeah. fighting for the rest of us. Slinging beers, going, yeah, come yeah. on, come on, you gotta get the vote somehow. Like... <laughs> fighting against the big beer, fighting against the distributor. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm joking. We, I think, it, you know, it's just one of those deals where Texas has had some pretty strict laws. Yeah. Um, so it, it forced us to go into the route of manufacturing brewery. Um, we chose to do it on our own. You know, it, you know I always kind of think about the old Pace Picani commercial that said, you know, you know, uh, salsa made in New York City. You know, we can't contract Tex-Mex beer out to yeah, Wisconsin yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or, you know, Michigan or any of those places. We had to make it right here. So in order to do that, we had to build our own brewery, you know, self-funded, 100%. Jim and I basically built this place with our hands. And really the goal was to get up on the market, establish our brand, and then allow us to kind of jump to the next level, a larger scale. And that's really where we're headed now. So. Can you tell me a little bit about your logo? Like, the, obviously you guys put some thought into the branding you guys have is really cool, very unique. Why don't you walk us through what that is? So yeah, uh, Twisted X uh, is a type of barbed wire, and if you look at the logo, kind of from left to right, it uh, has the star of Texas, the Lone Star on the left, and uh, the barbed wire kind of runs through the middle of it. Um, the skull itself is more of a Dia de los Muertos play um, with a little sombrero on it, and then the three bands on the right are really significant of the Mexican flag. So we wanted to be subtle, uh, but also kind of celebrate this new kind of growing subculture that's really exploded in Austin and San Antonio. Yeah. Uh, so making Tex-Mex beer, kind of creating it as we go, we wanted to be more of a, that Dia de los Muertes, but also a more of a tattoo-y type look. So uh, our artist is a guy named Josh Rowan. He uh, used to be a tattoo artist, but he's also jumped into the media, um, you know, digital media art round, and he's done a lot of the local websites for the tattoo artists. So you know, he's a great guy. We call him up on the phone and say, hey, here's the type of beer, here's the logo we want. In you know hours or in a few you know within a day or so he's come up with these really great ideas for us, so we're going to kind of continue with that theme and uh, kind of see where it goes. And what are you seeing the response like? How how the how's the demand been for your beer? Yeah, it's really been great. Uh, I mean, we're selling every drop we we can make, which is a great problem to have. At the same time, as from a sales guy's perspective, it's frustrating, right? <laughs> you have all these uh, all these satisfied <laughs> and unsatisfied customers. Yeah, right? I mean, like we, folks we that want it. We attended the Craft Brewers Festival last year, and we had like 100, 150 people in line. And we were like, oh my goodness, what happened? Uh, but you know, I think it goes a long way to say, look, our business model has been proven. And it allows us to, to jump to this next step. Um, we want to be able to help celebrate this awesome beer community and this big explosion that we have here. And I think it's time. Prime time. We're doing something different. 
Um, you know, we're the, one of the smallest breweries in Texas. We're making one of the hardest beers to make as far as fermentation wise. Right, our lagers take you know five to six weeks to ferment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ale that we make, our IPA takes eight days, maybe at the most yeah, two, technically two weeks. Yeah, technically challenging. So yeah, we, I mean, we're a small group, we're a small brewery. We're making beers that take a long time, so we didn't make it easy on ourselves. But I mean, I think that's that's where. You know where what's, what's funny about this? Like the folks I've been talking to, not a single person has. Like like everyone down here that in Austin that's making beer is doing exactly that. They're taking it head on, they're doing really cool stuff, and they're having yeah. a great impact. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of the scene like going forward? What, what, what's, this gonna, what's gonna happen here in Austin over the next, well, next year or two? I mean, I, I think there's lots of room. I mean, if you look at Texas as a whole, um, the, the amount of breweries per capita, we're second lowest amount of breweries per capita only next to California. So there's 27 million people here, but not a whole lot of breweries. So yeah. there's a lot of room to grow. I think locally, there probably is always going to be at some point a, a fight for tap handles, right? A, you know, bit, yeah. a bar only has so many tap handles. Well, more of those seem to be appearing every every week, right. though, too. There's more bars. And, and I'll be honest, I, I you know Jim and I drink all kinds of beer. We drink the pale ales, the ambers. Uh, we you know we like and definitely respect all the other breweries out there that are craft breweries that are in Austin. They've been really helpful to us getting started. At the same time, when we walk into a bar, um, being able to present them with a unique style of beer that's not already on the wall. Yeah, yeah. I think it makes it a little easier on us, um, but we still got to have to fight to make sure that our quality is good, and that's something we'll never turn our eye on, right. you know, back from. So. so so, first off, I mean, obviously you're selling into the Austin area. You're probably not going far beyond Austin at this point, are you? Uh, we've done a couple test uh, dips down into San Antonio, so yeah. we've been on tap at uh, Mi Tierra, which is the uh, the bar down in the El Mercado, oh, okay. right? Wow, cool. um, we did a, a specialty scenario down there. They had the cocktail festival um, where a lot of the international uh, folks came down and we had a beer dinner there. So we've done some things in San Antonio um, just to kind of test the market. It will definitely be a big market for us. Um, just a question of when, really. Yeah, it's really about when. And I think when we move into November, um, when we start to move into our new place and have a lot more capacity, uh, it's going to allow us to open up at least Austin and San Antonio as our core area. Obviously, Austin is where we're from, so we'll we'll definitely try to do as much as we can here. Uh, I think, honestly, I think that the Austin market still holds at least 10,000 barrels for us a year. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, I mean, that's you're, a huge... You're doing a three-barrel system right yeah, now, Yeah, we're on right? three... Uh, you know, all of last year we made 27 barrels of beer. <laughs> we'll be able to do that next year on the very first batch we make. That's awesome. That's <laughs> so... I mean, again, that's the frustrating part, but there's definitely a barrier to entry here, right? Yeah. So it took us two years to get this the small scale brewery up and functional. Um, you know, we're hoping to pass this on to the next, you know, incubator or startup brewery as it sits in place. It's zoned properly. It's, in, you know, it's... Uh, so it's like almost like turnkey, like someone could come yeah, in here. Yeah, someone could walk in and just say, here, take over. Uh, and we would definitely help even from a consulting perspective. I'm, I'm, we're all about kind of helping the Austin community because yeah, yeah. it was so nice to us. You know, the folks at Real L, Tim Schwartz, you know, Uncle Billy's, Brian Amos and those guys, um, you know, even Circle Brewing, Thirsty Planet. Yeah. And, you know, at times when we first moved in here, um, we, were, we were making kegs and we didn't even have a keg washer. So the guys <laughs> at Circle Brewing were like, yeah, come on over, you know, wash your kegs when we do our next run. That's awesome. And, you know, it's one of those situations where it's not competitive right now. I mean, really... Everybody in town can sell as much beer as they can physically produce. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that's great. Eventually, that might change a we'll probably yeah. get a little breweries pop up here and there. Uh, so I don't know when that will be. But, but the interesting thing to point yeah. out, too, there's some award-winning beers being made here. So sure. there, there's going to be a real demand outside Austin. You, get, you satisfy the Austin market. I think it's fair to say the rest of Texas isn't all that well served in craft beer. Certainly. And a very, I mean, St. Arnold, obviously, is a big, big place. They've been around for a long mm -hmm. time. Deep Elm in Dallas. But this, not a lot of it's there's a lot of room here in texas for craft sure. beer yeah i mean i think every one of the big markets in texas is easily a, a 10 to fifteen thousand oh, barrels a year crazy. market so you know real ale and, and st arnold's are in the fifty thousand barrel range yeah. you know shiner is at four hundred thousand barrels <laughs> that's uh, a little bit of know, beer i wish we could get there pretty quickly but you know, yeah it's one of those deals where in a brewery we're limited by fermentation space yeah and you can see here we're we're severely limited by yeah, that space. So there you go. So, you know, the, the new place will allow us to grow to 7,000 square foot. We'll definitely have a lot of space for fermentation, yeah. a lot of space for lagering, yeah. and uh, it'll really allow us to, I think, make a dent in the market. And, uh, you know, our goal is to kind of sit out there and try to take as many big beer drinkers as we can, right? The folks that are drinking the Mexican imp imports, the you know, even the Coors, the Millers, and be able to come over to the craft side, taste a little bit, because we're making lagers, right? It's a craft lager. 
but come on over, taste a little bit, but then also maintain the fact that we're an all grain brewery. We're using local corn. Yeah, right? that was an interesting yeah. one. I, I mean, you know, you're using corn in the right way. I think yeah. you know, there's people folks that they, they call it an adjunct, but you guys use it as, a, as an important piece of the, not the traditional style of beer you're making. We do, yeah. We're using all Mexican style yeast, right, lager yeast, but we're also using a, a corn, a local corn to be able to help with that. So. That's awesome. You guys worked with Billy Gibbons, and you made a beer for him. Now, tell us about that. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it was a fun project. Uh, we kind of connected up uh, through one of our friends to uh, the marketing director that handles the BFG brand. So it's not ZZ Top, but Billy Gibbons himself yeah. does some uh, barbecue sauce, does some hot sauce. And uh, last year, they were having a South by Southwest party down at Lambert's Barbecue here in Austin. And uh, really, the, the key, he, they were trying to come up with a cool concept to celebrate the whole speed shop that he's invested in. Jesse James and all those guys are doing cool uh, hot rods. So we came up with a beer called Ocho Suerte, uh, which is Lucky 8. It has one of the vehicles on it uh, uh, that's here. And basically, uh, it's one of the only cars that Billy Gibbons doesn't own. <laughs> his lucky number is eight, yeah, and yeah. his favorite beer is a Negro Modelo style, like a dark lager. Yeah. So we created a beer for him, served it as, as his Southwest, uh, by Southwest Party, and uh, went over pretty well. So I think, you know, I think we're still working with them on you know, what that means for us in the yeah, future, but it was fun. Cool. So I, I have yeah. to be honest with you. I've been creeped out this entire interview because <laughs> this owl keeps on staring at me. Can you tell me what he's all about? Yeah, I, mean, he's, like, uh, I, I, I think he's looking at my juicy shoulder. And he's this gonna is, uh, this is my buddy. He goes way back, back into my college days. I picked him up on the, on the side of a road in Las Vegas on a, a spring break trip. Seriously, on oh, the yeah. side of a road? Yeah. Yeah, uh, on the top of a barn on the desert on the way to California from Las Vegas on a, a road trip that uh, I can't really go into anymore. Were there gunshots as you, as you ran uh, off No, the we yard? got pulled over by an airplane, though. Um, oh, nice. Seriously. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> we got the owl. Uh, you know, his favorite saying is, call! Um, it's actually one of the beers we made for our yeah. anniversary party. But his name is Lechusa. And, uh, and Lechusa in Spanish means owl. Uh, but it also means this weird, mystical witch lady um, but we really use it to be the protectorate of our fermentation tanks. So, yeah, I, I think this is a good image for uh, the brewery, and uh, he's a good friend of ours, and we don't want to upset the, the owl. Yeah, yeah. So Last, be careful. Well, I, I'm yeah. being very careful. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going over the bar. I'm kind of like making sure I'm keeping my distance. Yeah. One, one question I got for you, one last question. How often are you guys doing tastings here? You're obviously set up to do that. You host yeah. folks. How does that all work? Um, yeah, we, we're hopefully doing tastings at least once a month. We try to do two, but... Do uh, you schedule online? We do schedule online. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, TexMexBeer.com, and there's a page that talks about our tours and tastings. And uh, we'll usually put up on there which tours are, and you're going to register online. Uh, it's pretty informal, right? We show up, uh, um, you know, according to TABC, we have to give you a free sample of beer, but you also, we allow you to get a pint, full pint glass. Uh, the actual glass and take it home. Yeah. Um, so we give you a tour, tell you about the brewing process. The tour must take a couple uh, yeah. hours, I'm thinking. Like to do the tour <laughs> here, it's like it takes the, a little bit of time. Uh, I mean, we schedule them. It takes about an hour and a half, and we space them out a little bit. But uh, I, we want it to be intimate enough yeah. to kind of tell our story, but also educate people on how beer is made. And I think there's a, a kind of a myth in the market about you know a brewery being this big industrial smokestack type oh, scenario, yeah. where yeah. in reality we're we're using hand you know hand built recipes. It's local ingredients, it's all grain environment, and it's in, the, in our case, it's two guys, right? You know, boiling water and, you know, and filtering beer and, and making it all happen. Yeah. So we want to kind of continue to promote that as the local craft industry is, we're artisans, right? It's authentic. It's authentic. That's a that's, neat keyword. That's my new keyword <laughs> because it is. I mean, like, I, there's, yeah. a, there's very few places you come in, like, you know, you could come here, meet the guys who are love, like, that make the stuff you love to drink. Like, yeah. it's a really, really cool thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, well, I'm, I'm a native Texan. I was born in San Antonio. I grew up in Houston. I've been living in Austin for, you know, 12, 13 years. I've grown deep roots here. Um, I've been a part of this whole Tex-Mex community, and I love it. And Jim and I just really set out to say, look, let's go celebrate that. Yeah. Let's not play one side or the other. Let's just do what we're doing. Let's create these beers as we go to create the... Uh, a Mexican style lager, but with a Texas twist is what yep. we call it. And, you know, the jalapenos are involved, the prickly pears are involved, the local corn, you know, anything we can kind of attach ourselves to that kind of plays to this central Texas area, we're all on board with. Awesome. Well, so. thanks. It's been great being here. I appreciate you guys making the time. Cheers. Cheers. School. Nazdorovia. Yeah. <laughs> cool. cool. I'll use the call here. I'm not sure <laughs> if I can use it elsewhere, but thank you, folks.